Lord, we do worship you and praise you in this place. We thank you for your word. We know that, Lord, that it is by your hand that we're fed. That, Lord, that you give us each day the, the revelation knowledge that we need. And, Lord, now we come before you. And, Lord, we open your word and we open our hearts. And, Father, open your word to our hearts. That we not be only hearers of the word, but doers also. In this hour, in this time that we live in, Father, we just pray earnestly. We pray earnestly to walk so close with you. And Lord, we give you all the glory, all the honor and praise. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, let's turn over here this morning to Luke chapter 12, verse 31. In the background, Jesus is talking about not taking thought for what we shall eat or what we shall put on or the things of this life. He says to look at the birds of the field, look at the lilies. And in verse 31, he says, but rather seek ye the kingdom of God. And all these things, what you'll have to put on, the things in this natural, will be added unto you. Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. It's his good pleasure to do that, to give you the things that we need. Everything that pertains to life and godliness has been given to us in Christ, in who we are in Christ, in recognizing our union with him. Now, having said that, let's go over here to Matthew chapter 6. And this is the parallel scripture Matthew chapter 6, and we'll just pick up here in verse 33. So this is a power, this is a parallel scripture. So we'll pull out just a little bit more here in what Matthew has to say. Matthew 6, 33 says, But seek ye First, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Verse 34 Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought of the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Verse 33, it's very interesting. Jesus says, seek first. Seek first the kingdom. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Seek the things of the kingdom. Seek relationship with him first and foremost. As we start our day, as we start this, as, as we start this new adventure with the Lord, the first thing we are to do when we get up in the morning is we seek his face. We seek the revelation that we need for this day. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us today the revelation that we need to live through this day. We'll worry about tomorrow, tomorrow. Tomorrow will come, and it has its own troubles, and it has its own problems. Sufficient is today. The revelation sufficient is what we have today to deal with. Don't throw away your todays by trying to live tomorrow. Don't do that. That makes people very unhappy people. When you're so concerned about tomorrow, 
that you miss today. Today is a gift. Today is. And we live in today. We don't have to live tomorrow, thank God. We just have to live the moment now. And we live in the revelation that we have today. And that's the revelation that God gives us. Now, let's turn over here to Psalm chapter 27. So, keeping that in mind, seek ye first, we're going to take this verse apart, seek ye first the kingdom. So, Psalm 27. Psalm 27 Verse 8. Oh, we have to go back to verse 4. Sorry, Brian. Verse 4 says, One thing have I desired of the Lord. That will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Now we'll throw that in with verse 8. When thou said, seek my face, my heart said unto thee, thy face, Lord, will I seek. Thy face I'll seek. And those that seek me early shall find me. That's scripture also. But we seek his face, and that's the first thing that we do. Before our feet hit the floor in the morning, there is that quiet time in the morning when it is just you and the Lord. And to talk with him. And we're going to talk about prayer. What is prayer? What is, what's prayer? Very simply, it's just talking with God. That's what prayer is, is it not? Yes. It's just communing with God, talking with God, having a conversation with the creator of all that is. That is what prayer is. A lot of it's listening, and some of it's speaking. But it is a two-way communication. Not us doing all the talking. And at the same time also, God not doing all the talking either. But it is a dialogue. It is a, a fellowship. It's a discussion between the Creator and His object of affection. We being the object of his affection. Before we start our days, and in this hour that we live in now, this desperate hour, when evil is running rampant, when people are calling evil good and good evil, when everything's been switched around, it is imperative that we find out what is the will of the Lord for our lives today? Lord, what do you want us to do today? And in everything, pray. Pray about everything. That is the will of God for us, to pray about everything, is it not? To walk with him and talk with him about everything. Everything. Psalm 119, since we're here in the Psalms, we'll go to Psalm 119. Psalm 119, verse 2, it says, Blessed, we're blessed, right? Who are the blessed of Jesus Christ? We are, amen? Blessed are they that keep his testimonies. And that seek him with the whole heart. The whole heart. This is not a half-hearted thing. 
We don't pray just because that's what Christians do. Well, that's the Christian thing to do. That's why we pray. No, we pray and talk with God because we have a fellowship and we have a relationship. That is why we pray. Why do we pray over our food? Has anybody ever thought about that? Well, because we've got to eat it. <laughs> That's why. Because we can eat any deadly thing and it'll hurt us. Sometimes we really need to pray over our meals. Depending on who the cook is. <laughs> no amen on that. <laughs> That's dangerous ground, is it not? <laughs> Amen. Amen. No, we pray over our food because we sanctify it by the word of God and by thanksgiving it is received into our bodies. That's why we pray over our food. It doesn't have to be a very long prayer. We pray over our food when we go out anywhere. And especially when I cook, praise God, we really pray over it. <laughs> we say, Lord, we thank you for this. By the words of praise and thanksgiving, we sanctify it, we set it apart unto our bodies, and, and we thank you, Lord. We thank you for what we have. There are some people that don't have anything to eat. So we thank you for it, and we bless this. We bless it by the words that come up out of us through the Holy Spirit, and we bless our food. So that way when we eat it, it's set apart for us. We're putting this into the temple of the Most High God. You better sanctify it before you bring it into the temple. Amen. So that's why we pray over our food. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. And we're going to stay at this scripture for a little bit. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Everybody knows this passage of scripture. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all. A-L-L. -L. All means all, right? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Verse 6, in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall, he shall direct your paths. In all your ways acknowledge him. So if there's a question on our path, it's because we haven't acknowledged him in all of our ways. Doesn't that make sense? Well, Lord, I question where I'm supposed to go and what I'm supposed to do. Have you acknowledged him in all of your ways? Because the scripture says that if we acknowledge him in all of our ways, he'll direct our paths. He'll put it on your heart, the things to do. He'll put it on, the heart, on your heart, the things that we should walk in this day, the decisions that we have to make. And all of us, as we go through this, this day, have decisions that we need to make. Turn here, don't turn here. Go to eat here, don't eat there. Go, you know, go over here, stay. Say this, don't say this. Walk this way, don't walk this way. Cross the street now. You know, when you are in constant communion and constant relationship with the Lord and constantly talking to Him, that's when He's always constantly speaking to you and you don't have to ask God all the time, Lord, do you think I ought to do that? No, we're walking with Him and it's just as if a friend is walking and he says, hey, hold on just a second, don't do that. Stay constantly in prayer. In this day and hour that we live in right now, it is imperative that we stay in prayer all the time. Pray without ceasing. Isn't that what the scripture says? Pray without ceasing. A lot of the mistakes that we've made in our lives, we can point back and say that's because we didn't ask the Lord. True. One amen on that. <laughs> the rest of you must have never made a mistake. <laughs> no, we can look back in our lives and we can see that the things that, that, that have happened in our lives have come about because we didn't talk to the Lord about it. Amen. 
And not to be in a condemnation way. But we can learn from those things. We can learn and say, look, these are the things that happened because we didn't consult the Lord on this. We just jumped in wholeheartedly and then we asked God to bless it. Ouch, I know. I know. I get this first. See, the Lord talks to me about these things and then I just share with you. But I have to take the sword of the Spirit and cut off the parts of the flesh too, just as much as you do. Yes, there's been times that I've jumped in both feet and said, Lord, bless this now. And it not be the will of the Lord. We all have. And we should learn from those things and go on into maturity and not do that again. Now, God is bigger than our mistakes. Amen. Thank God Almighty. And all things work together for the good of them that love God. So if you jump wholeheartedly in and you make a mistake, repent. Father, forgive me, I didn't talk to you about this. Whatever is not of faith is sin. See, if we look at it that way, whatever is not of faith is sin. Did I talk to God about this or did I do it in the strength of my own flesh? Did I do it in the arm of the flesh or did I do it by the power of God? If it's not of faith, it's sin. Did I talk to God about it before I jumped into this? Now let's bring it into light of what it truly is. And that will cause us to look and say, I repent. And to repent is to have a change of heart and a change of direction. To say, Father, forgive me. I didn't talk to you about this. You know, Smith Wigglesworth was riding down the road one day with a, with a bunch of ministers in a car. And as they was going, they were talking about the meetings, and they were talking about the countryside, and they were talking about the drive. And Smith Wigglesworth screams at the top of his lungs, Stop! And the guy slammed on the brakes of the car, and he's sitting there, and they're thinking that something's wrong. And Smith Wigglesworth says, We need to ask forgiveness because we have not included Father in our conversation. How real is God to you? We talked about that Wednesday night, the, the, the earnest of the inheritance, that the inheritance, our earnest part, is a person, the Holy Spirit, who dwells on the inside of us, and that we should walk with Him as, as our comforter and as our friend, as a person that he is we didn't ex we didn't we didn't receive an experience we received a, a person we received a person and we should consult the third person who dwells in us all the time we should consult him on everything he's closer than our breath he's closer than the person that you're married to That's why if young people are coming together and thinking about marriage, they should have sought the Lord. Is this the person that you want me to marry? Lord, is this the path for my life? Lord, is this the direction you want me to go? Seek first the kingdom. Seek first the kingdom. The kingdom, God's will. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Seek first the kingdom. Lord, is this your will? I lay aside my will. I offer my will up to you. I seek first the kingdom, the will of God. What needs to be done. That's what we seek first. And then his righteousness, his righteousness, right standing with God, not our own righteousness, not trying to do something. That's self-righteousness, 
And we'll be talking about that, and that's in the book of Romans. The difference between self-righteousness and God's righteousness. Self-righteousness is worked by the law. The set of rules and regulations, if I do this and I do that, then God will bless me. It doesn't work that way. Nobody can strong arm God. The way that we receive anything from God is based on God's righteousness, which is a free gift and faith that we are, and we sing that song, that we are clothed in righteousness. We're clothed with His righteousness, not based on our performance. It's a free gift. We're clothed with holiness. His holiness, not based on what we've done. Because then it would be you'd earn it. It's grace. It's a free gift. And in our holiness, our, our relationship with the Lord, we have to come to Him as a free gift. As receiving it as a free gift, if you would. Now does that make sense? So we seek first the kingdom. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Why aren't we seeing God's will done on the earth? Because we, as a bunch of Christians, haven't yielded over our will. Amen or oh me. But, as people yield over their wills to God, then we will see the will of God transform. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, not mine, yours. We talked about this morning finding our place. Romans chapter 1 verse 6, finding the call on your life, following what you're supposed to do. The way you find that out is by getting on your face before God and not getting up until you have a clear direction. Seek first the kingdom, His will, Father, your will be done, and then His righteousness, God's righteousness. Now, that's the other part of the scripture. So let's go back to Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, because we're taking the scripture apart. Matthew 6, 33, but seek ye first. We seek his face. We seek his will first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Then the second part, and his righteousness. Not our righteousness. His righteousness. Now, Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3. And where do we want to pick up, Lord? Verse 19. Romans chapter 3, verse 19 says, Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them that are under the law, that are under the rules and regulations. That every mouth may be stopped and all the world may be become guilty before God. That is the purpose of the law. That nobody is righteous. No, not one. That is the purpose of the law. To show everybody, Jews, Gentiles, the whole mix, everybody is guilty. Verse 20. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, by doing well, I'm going to do this. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to quit this. I'm going to stop this. I'm going to do this. And then that way God will be happy with me. And then God will bless me. Now I know there's nobody here that's ever thought that way. Nobody's ever made deals with God. Well, God, if you'll answer my prayers, then I'll quit this. God, if you'll answer this with one time, then I won't do this anymore. That is unbelief. 
And that is a slap in the face to the grace and the body and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because you are trying to get something from God based on what you do and not based on what Christ did. And we've all done it. Amen or oh me, we've all done it. But as we grow in Christ, as we grow and as we look into these scriptures and we see that it's not my righteousness, it's not a set of rules and regulations, but rather his righteousness, which is given to me as a gift because I believe on him and faith in his righteousness. Now, when we stand before the throne of God, we stand before the throne of grace. He says, make your petitions known. Come, let's, let's talk about some things. The first thing that God had to do, he had to take out of us the dead nature that made us fearful of God. He had to take out that condemnation that was in us thinking, how can we stand in the presence of a holy God? We who have sinned against a holy God, how can we stand before God Almighty? He had to get that out of it. He had to take care of that part. He had to. We couldn't do it on our own. So he had to do that by giving us his son. And putting within us a new nature. And then we had to understand that we have right standing with God now. Through his son. And faith in what his son does and did makes us able to stand before the throne of God with no sin consciousness. With no condemnation. Because it goes back to his righteousness. Not our own. Now we stand in the presence of a holy God based on what his son did and we are clothed. I love that song, Judy. It's wonderful today. Clothe me with your righteousness. Clothe me with your, your holiness. So how, would, how should we see ourselves in the spirit? Those that worship God must worship him in spirit and in truth. How should you see yourself in the spirit? You should see yourself holy, pure, and clean before a holy, pure, and clean God because that is who you are. Clothed with His righteousness, like the word that the Lord spoke down here. He says, I've crowned you in loving kindness and tender mercies. Is that not scripture? That you are clothed with righteousness, His righteousness, not our own. Don't take your clothes off at the throne that he's clothed you with. All right. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For, the, for by the deeds or, for, or by the law that is the knowledge of sin. That's the reason for the law. That everybody could look at it and say, well, let's measure ourselves up against this law. Yep, I'm a sinner. Yep, I failed. Yep. I'm broken. But now, verse 21, but now there's two different types of righteousness. The righteousness of the law or our self-righteousness and the righteousness of God. Verse 21, but now the righteousness of God without the law is manifest and it witnesses by the law and the prophets verse 22 even the righteousness of God which is how it's by faith it's by the faith of Jesus Christ unto all upon all them that believe for there's no difference for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God the difference is the people who are trying to be self-righteous and trying to do something to get God to do something and those that are standing in God's righteousness clothed with his righteousness because of the faith that we put in what Jesus Christ has did. That's the two different groups. Amen. That's a wonderful place to say amen. That's the two different groups. That's the sheep and goat judgment. 
the sheep, the ones that have put their faith in what Jesus Christ has done and claim a righteousness which is not a righteousness of their own. Now we use the word righteousness and it's a, a religious term, but all righteousness means is right standing with God. So we have right standing, we have fellowship, we can talk to a holy God because of His righteousness that He has given to us. And we put faith in that, not our actions. Turn the magnifying glass around. Look at what God has done, not what you have done. Anytime you get tempted to turn the microscope or the, the magnifying glass around on yourself, Turn the thing around and get your focus back on the Lord, back on what He's done. As I said, the battle is in the mind to keep your focus on the Lord and not on the things around you or yourself. That's the battle. There's your battle. And He will keep us in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on Him, not ourselves. Not our actions, not what's going on around us, but He keeps us in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on Him. So, if you don't have peace, your mind is not stayed on Him. <laughs> I mean, how, how many years of cemetery do we have to go through to misunderstand the Scriptures? If you don't have peace, your mind's not stayed on Him. If you have peace, your mind is stayed on Him. Pretty simple. <laughs> Amen and amen. All right. Since we're talking about His righteousness, right? Seek first the kingdom and then His righteousness. His righteousness. Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. And we'll just pick up here. In verse 4, Romans 10, 4, for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness, for trying to do. Christ is the end of that because he did it, right? He fulfilled the law. Every jot, tittle, everything, he fulfilled it for us, right? And then laid it to our account. And said, forgiven. In my name. He put his name on our name. That we are one with him now. You really have to see yourself that way. You really have to understand. You, he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. You are joined to the Lord. You are joined to him. He lives in you. He is one with you, and you are one with Him. And you have to, by faith, understand that, and then it becomes a reality. Then you'll start seeing the manifestation, but we understand it in our heart first, and then it comes out. All right. For Christ is the end of the law of righteousness to everyone that believes. So we as believers, the, the law, that's it. We understand what the law was for, to make us all guilty. That's what the law was for, right? So Christ is the end of that. Now that's it. Laws, we're not under that law. Christ is the end of the law. And he supersedes all of that. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law. That the man that doeth the things shall live by them. That's a doing kind of thing. And if you offend the law in one point, the whole thing is broken. We've talked about that before. If we had a big plate glass window up here, and you shoot a BB into it, it's broken. You drive a truck through it. It's still broken. No matter how small or how big, it's broken. Well, if you offend in the law in, in, in any one point, you're guilty of the whole thing. 
And that's the purpose of the law. So the small, the people that says, well, I only did this little bitty thing, you broke the law. And somebody else said, I did this great big thing. Well, you broke the law. And we all broke it. It's all broken. Only Christ could fix that. All right. But the righteousness, verse 6, but the righteousness which is of what? Faith. The righteousness which is of faith. Faith in what? Faith that I'm clothed with his righteousness as a free gift. That I am in right standing right now with God. Not based on my doing, but based on the free gift. That's what the gospel is about. That I can stand before a holy God with no condemnation because I'm in right standing with him because of what he's done. Not what I've done. So seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. Not our righteousness, his righteousness. All right, let's go back to Matthew 6. Since we're right here, I should have told you to hold your place there. But now Matthew 6 will have a new meaning to you. Matthew 6, 33. Seek first the kingdom, Father, thy will be done. Not my will. I want what you want. And the righteousness which is of faith, seeking your righteousness. The righteousness of God. Not acts. Not doing. And all these things. Now this is the rest part of the verse. So we seek first the kingdom, God's will. Your will for my life, Father. Not my will. And I know your righteousness. I stand in your presence by your righteousness. And then what does he say? And then all these things shall she be added unto you. All these things. What things? Well, what you should wear, what you should put on, where you should live, if you have enough to provide, if you have enough to, to eat, if you have enough to pay your bills, the whole thing. Instead of trying to chase down prosperity, seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. God doesn't have anything wrong with prospering. He takes pride and he takes enjoyment in prospering us when we have our priorities right. Instead of seeking the gift, we seek the giver of the gift. Big difference. Huge difference. I mean, all these ministries that are preaching prosperity. Here, do this and God will... God's not a slot machine. He's not. He's a person. He's love. No, we have an intimate relationship with him. And, I, and, and we walk in this world and he takes care of us. See, that shoots, a, that shoots a hole in the head of prosperity, that prosperity gospel. Go preach that over in China with, the, with all, the, all the millions of Christians who are being martyred right now. Go over and try to preach that. That's garbage. Verse 34, therefore, take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for tomorrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. So, having said that, his righteousness, his will in my life, let's turn over here to, well, let's go to Ephesians. I have two more scriptures after that, so Judy's timing it right. <laughs> Unless y'all want to stay all day. <laughs> if we can do that, all right, praise God. Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. And we'll just pick up here in verse 10. Ephesians 6.10 says, Finally... My brethren, be strong 
in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Not your might, His might. Be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the relationship that we have with Him. Be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God. That you may be able to stand in the wild, stand against the wiles of the devil. So, when things happen in this world, and things will happen, we've not been promised that we shall not in, have persecution. We shall, Jesus said, in this world you will have trouble, you will have tribulation. There's things that's going to happen. But be of good cheer, I've overcome the world, and we're in Him, right? We are in Him. So, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, stand. Now, if you don't know what the Lord has spoken to you early in the morning, and where to stand, and how to stand, and you don't have the will of God, and the revelation for this day, how in the world are you going to stand? And where in the world are you going to stand? Well, I'll go get a promise out of the promise box. Pull out my scripture for the day and I'll look at it. Jesus wept. Well, that was a wonderful scripture. Is that the word of God for me today? I don't know because I didn't seek the Lord on this and I don't know what the word of the Lord is today. I'm too busy because I got to get on with this day. Mm -mm -mm. All right. Now, I'm just telling you the things that the Lord's talked to me about. Running 100 mile an hour with your head on fire. Instead of seeking first the kingdom and sitting down and finding out what God has for you today. Because you can bypass a whole lot of trouble if you know it's a coming. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, stand. Because you've spent time with God, and you know the word of God, and you know the revelation for this day, you'll be able to stand, because where will your faith be? You won't be out there stumbling around and saying, well, God, bless this mess. Instead, you'll say, I know I'm supposed to be here. God told me I was supposed to be here. I know that God said that this was going to happen, and I'm going to stand. Because I have the word of God on it. Instead of being in the midst of a storm and asking God to pull you out of the storm, or to bless the mess, or whatever. See how important it is that we get the mind of God on everything before we even start. So that way we have a place to stand. Now, having done all to stand, we stand there because I got a word from God. I know this is where I'm supposed to be. I know this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And all hell may break loose around me, but I know that I'm supposed to be here, and now I know that I am anointed in this, and I have the anointing of God on this, because this is where I'm supposed to be. Then you don't question. Then you know. Does that make sense? Man, Lord, instead of running around and saying, well, I'm a missionary and I'm going to be a missionary. Who chose you to be a missionary? Did you pray about it? Did you ask God if you're supposed to be a missionary? Did you ask him if you're supposed to go to this country? Or did you just take it upon yourself that, hey, I'm just going to be a missionary? That's why 90% of missionaries fail. Because they didn't check out and with God what they're supposed to be doing. Instead, they went out in their own heart or under compassion or under emotion instead of seeking God's face and saying, God, what do you want me to do? Then get over there and then things start getting rough and then they come home. Amen. All of us know situations like that, right? They didn't seek God on it and they got over there and it's a bad witness for the Lord and they come on home. 
The best thing to do is pray and seek God's face on it. And if that's where you're supposed to go, if times do get tough, you have a word from God. No, this is where I'm supposed to be. This is where I'm supposed to be. No matter what happens, this is where I'm supposed to be. See the difference? All right. Stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith you may be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Verse 18, this is where the Lord wanted to go. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplications for all the saints. That means praying and constant communion with God, whether it be talking with the Lord in our understood language, praying in the spirit, praying in tongues, groaning within ourselves, meditating on the Lord, meditating on the word. Where's our mind stayed? As we're walking with the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit, we are in constant communion with Him, knowing what is the mind, the will of the Spirit at all times, because we are constantly talking with Him. And we don't make a move in our life without consulting Him. Amen. That's how we are to walk. That is how we are to walk. And that will explain a lot of things. Why Christians and why things that look good on the outside and why, hey, this is a Christian endeavor. This shouldn't have done this. This should have done this. Why did it fail? Well, here, I'll ask, did you pray about it? Before you entered into this, did you pray about it? Amen. By all prayer and supplication, we make our requests known unto God. Everything. 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 All right, Philippians 4. Philippians 4, and then I have one more verse I'll share with you. Everybody okay? Okay, praise God. I tell you these things because I love you. And I want you to walk. I want you to walk in a higher level of maturity and not be out there and just stumbling around, but to be walking in the high things. Amen. Philippians chapter 4, and we'll just pick up here in verse 6. Oh, we'll pick up in verse 4. We've got to do that. Philippians 4, 4 says, Rejoice in the Lord always. If you didn't get it the first time, Paul says it again. And again, I say rejoice. <laughs> I have to say that I got a saying that I always say from Keith Moore. If you complain, you'll remain. And if you praise, you'll raise. <laughs> I didn't say that. Keith Moore did by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. But that always reminds me. You go around and complain. You're going to remain. Have you prayed about it? Have you talked to God about it? Or you just go around and complain about it? God will change it. If you go to Him. Amen. All right. Verse 5. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Jesus is coming back. Amen. Jesus is coming back and he is going to take over. Amen and amen. And we don't get to vote for King Jesus. He is a king. And he comes in and that's that for that. There are no vetoes. Amen and amen. <laughs> Praise God. Verse 6. Be careful for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. Isn't that what Jesus said over in Matthew chapter 6? Put the kingdom first. 
Understand your right position with God. Don't be anxious for anything, but in everything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Pray about everything. Talk with the Holy Spirit about everything. He's here. He's here. And some people say, well, boy, that's extreme. No, it's not. If somebody who loved you and died for you and walked so close to you that knew more about you than you knew about yourself, don't you think that, that it, even common courtesy to talk with the Holy Spirit to acknowledge his presence. That goes back to Proverbs chapter 3, right? In all your ways acknowledge him. Acknowledge what? Acknowledge his presence. Acknowledge him. Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be made known unto God. Now, this is what rules and reigns in our hearts, right? Peace. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. That's the, that's the umpire. If you have peace about it, then that's the way we go. If we don't have peace about it, then we don't do that. And that happens quite a bit. As we walk through this world, should we expose ourselves to this or expose ourselves to that? And the Holy Spirit, and you know just as well as I do, the Holy Spirit will rise up on the inside of you and say, don't watch that. Don't have any part of that. That's not who you are. Why are you watching that? Why are you letting something in that will hinder the way that you hear from me? Last verse, First Thessalonians chapter 5. Verse 16, rejoice evermore. Verse 17, pray without ceasing. That means from the time that you, your feet hit the floor in the morning to the time that you close your eyes, you should be in constant communion with the Holy Spirit, in constant communion with Father. Jesus died so we could talk to God, so we could have fellowship with God. And I don't want to see anything that our Savior did go by the wayside. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God. What's the will of God? To rejoice evermore, to pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks. That's the will of God. Quench not the spirit and despise not prophesying. Prove all things, hold fast that which is good, and abstain from all appearance of evil. That means if you know in your heart that that is garbage, don't let it in your ears. Don't let it in your eyes. Don't let it in your house. Like I said before, every TV that I've ever seen has an on and off switch. Verse 23, we use this scripture quite a bit to prove out spirit, soul, and body, but we're going to pull it out and look at it a little different. And the very God of peace... The peace of God. Because we rejoice evermore, because we pray without ceasing, because we give thanks in everything, because we don't quench the Spirit when He calls us aside to spend time with Him, and we don't despise prophesying, meaning the Scriptures, meaning the things that, that is, that's coming out and the things that are being said according to the Word of God, we prove all things and we hold fast to those things which are good. We abstain from the appearance of all of evil, and the very God of peace sets you apart. Sanctify, that's what that word means. Sanctify you holy, 
And I pray your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he who called you. Going right back to calls. Going back to our calling. Yes, we are saved. And we are also called. Faithful is he that called you who also will do it. He called you. He'll hold you. He'll do it. Praise God forevermore. Well, Father, we do love you and we thank you. We thank you for your word. We thank you, Father God, that in these last hours, Father, that you've given us this word to stay so in communion with you through prayer, through supplication, to walk so close with you, Lord. Lord, we thank you today. We thank you for our veterans. We thank you for those who've given the ultimate sacrifice. We thank you, Father God, for those that are serving now, our Marines and our sailors, our airmen and our soldiers. Lord, we pray for their protection and their speedily return back to the ones that love them and their families. Lord, we do thank you. We thank you for all things. And we give you glory, honor, and praise for this word in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. amen. Praise God. Mm -hmm.